Hello, everybody. A very warm welcome to Vishti Larson. And uh, words fail me, but then and in his own words, as he says, he's a student of uh, Pandit Sanjay Rath. He lives in Denmark and professionally works as an astrologer day in, day out, as he says. He's a great teacher and and he believes that astrology can help you overcome your karma and to understand your karma in a lot of ways. It's, it's a great pleasure on this day to have him on board and he's teaching a very, very lucid, a very relevant subject to us today. I would not take up more of his time. Uh, I'll hand over the band to him. Vishti, a very warm and a heartfelt welcome to you on my channel. Thank you very much, Anu. It's a pleasure to be here. Here's looking forward to presenting a topic that, uh, that I know many people ask about and want to understand. And I hope to do so in the lucid way that you had depicted. Um, uh, I will be teaching conjunctions, you know, something very simple and straightforward, you would seem, but it, it bogs everybody with questions. Um, and I have some pres a presentation I prepared on the topic. Um, before I forget and say anything more, I should say Happy New Year to everyone. Um, and um, um, if, I, if I had to add anything to what you had said, um, the peculiarities of my life are that uh, I grew up in Kenya, East Africa and Mombasa. I was born in Kenya. My mom is from there and my father is from Denmark. I live in Denmark with both my parents. Uh, well, they live in Denmark. I don't live with them. Uh, I have a, my own family, a wife and two kids. Um, and uh, and uh, my exposure to, to, to the Vedic culture started actually in Kenya. Hmm. And it was because uh, I used to go to school in Nyali. And Nyali is, is a little India of, uh, of Mombasa. And, um, and all my, my classmates, I had more co uh, classmates who were from India um, uh, than I had uh, classmates who were actually from Kenya, which is telling a lot about the area. And, um, and so some of the, my best friends are from there, uh, from childhood, and they, uh, they were the ones who gifted me comic books about the devatas, all right? So I was going to... Exactly. Mm. Yes. And so I was going through as a kid these stories about the, the Rishi Vishwamitra and his competition with Vashishta mm. or about the Mahabharata uh, or similar stories like that. I was going through that and was inspired by that from a very young age. It didn't it occur to me until much later. I came to Denmark uh, in, in around age nine. Uh, but when I reached the age of 18, I was actually studying the whole, everything all over again. Nine years later, you know, a half for a whole kid to return, if you will. I was studying astrology again, and I ventured into Vedic astrology after a small uh, two years in Western astrology, and and uh, and have been doing that ever since. Made it a profession, and I'm very lucky to have Pandit Sanjirat as my teacher, uh, who has enabled me to have all the knowledge that I have today. Um, those those I think those groundbreaking years were the 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 ones that pulled you into the Vedic astrology was actually those very innocent groundbreaking and wanting to know more of the stories. Those Absolutely. Absolutely. I believe so as well. Yes. In so fact, I sit and look at my Rahu Ketu transits to the time when I got all that. <laughs> <laughs> so um, what, what, uh, what is it about conjunctions that is so important in our chart? Why do we why do we think conjunctions, why do we take conjunctions to be very, very important in our chart? Because conjunction is yoga. Yes. Right? Mm -hmm. And yoga is a concept where, at the spiritual perspective, it's the yoga between you and God. You and your Ishta? Mm -hmm. Yes. At a uh, level of, uh, of people having their charts, it is actually also a yoga between you and God, all right? Or pe two people uniting to reach a higher purpose. If we perceive that 
all beings in this planet have some divinity in them, then every yoga in the chart is you being able to meet such another individual. All right? Another form of divinity. So it is all pertaining to the concept of yoga. All right? Right. Um, now, we, if, if we were entertaining the idea that these yogas are the same as the spiritual yogas, then we would ask, well, there are these four yogas, you know, karma yoga, raja yoga, gyan yoga, okay, bhakti yoga. Hmm. Or maybe we should read what Shiva says on this topic. He has a bit more pragmatic approach. He says the yogas are mantra yoga, spristanga yoga, which covers the entire hatha yoga tradition. All right. Then he says there is, he, he mentions five, you see. He says mantra yoga, spristanga yoga. Then he mentions, uh, let me see if I got this right, bhava yoga, abhava yoga, and maha yoga. All right? Abhava and maha yoga. Yes, bhava, abhava, maha. Okay? Well, maha is the absolute yoga, the, the supreme yoga, where you have you actually got yoga with the divine. Now, these five are parts of the other four. For example, anybody who does karma yoga is, may learn also mantra yoga. To say, also I have a japa mantra I use, and I'm doing karma yoga. Somebody who's practicing bhakti yoga will usually have a mantra yoga associated with it, because they will be doing japa of their ishta devata, and as through that, they are trying to develop their bhakti. In raja yoga, they, the, you can also learn maha, uh, mantra yoga, because then you are practicing uh, different types of maybe kriyas. Kriya yoga today is the May, I believe it's the original uh, form of, of, of Raja Yoga, Kriya Yoga today. The way it's taught, it's exactly the same as the Raja Yoga traditions. And, and in that, you are also having a mantra. You learn either a breathing mantra, uh, the Soham mantra, Sohamsa, uh, or a similar such practice, even Om they will learn. So they're still having Mantra Yoga associated with it. And, and what to talk about Gyan Yoga, they also have mantras associated with it. So you can learn any of these five yogas as part of the four yogas. All right. So, so maybe they are also relevant when it comes to conjunctions because you can have yoga because of talking. Mantra yoga is described as the means of using words to have yoga with God. All right. So maybe similarly there, each of these five yogas you study from Shiv Puran can be related to these yogas in the chart. Mm -hmm. And especially if we admit that maybe certain yogas in the chart make a person spiritual, we can get to know how to obtain that in the chart through these, each of these five yogas. So conjunction is enabling us to obtain something. All right? right? Where the absolute attainment would be union with God, but even from a pragmatic perspective, yoga for any purpose. All right? right. Why it is relevant to speak on this is, is that whenever we speak on the topic of yoga, it always takes two. So now a question. There is a yoga called Mahapurush Yoga, right? It's called yeah. Mahapurush Yoga, which requires one planet to be in one sign in Kendras from the Lagna. Yeah. All right? That's the definition. Like Ruchaka Yoga is Mangal in on sign or Ucha in Kendra. Yes. Yeah. And, um, and so now the question, where's the other planet? And it's two. It's yoga, right? <laughs> Then the Rashi is the, is the yoga between the Rashi and the planet. That's right. That is right. Now, the, but it, yoga requires an, a thinking embodiment, something that is a thinking individual. And the Rashi, can, we cannot argue, has the intelligence, but the Lord of the Rashi does, right? Right. Mm -hmm. hmm. so, so now the dilemma. The dilemma is that obviously it's the yoga between the Graha and the Rashi, but it's because of the Lord of the Rashi. What happens in Mars is a known sign. If it's in Mesha, the Lord of the Rashi is himself. So there's a dilemma there. So this is then what we teach in the tradition. We say the real yoga is happening between the Graha and its Uchanata. Okay. okay? So yeah. for example, Jupiter in exaltation is exalted in Cancer. So the moon is the Lord of that sign, Uchanata. Yes. So Mahapurush Yoga of, Ma, of Hamsa, Jupiter's Mahapurush yes. Yoga, yes. is dependent on Jupiter and the moon. Mm. All right? Okay. Similarly, if Jupiter was in Sagittarius or Pisces, we say it still depends on Jupiter and the moon. Okay. Yes, that's, that's the derivation. Okay. That's the derivation. Because it's Uchanata is the one which is raising Jupiter to its high level. Okay. If Jupiter is well-placed, it needs the moon 
to raise it to the high level, to maintain it at that level. He becomes like Vishnu for the, for the, for the Graha. Hmm. All right? Vishnu is the one who is the Ucha, the highest, all right, in the context of yoga. Okay. So, not to talk about Devata, but to talk about yoga. So, what's happening is, is that whenever Jupiter is well placed, it needs moon to sustain it. Right. Right. So, so there are actually still two. So when, right. then we will say, you don't have Hamsa Yoga unless Moon is strong. And that people don't realize. That's so beautiful. People don't know this and people... So if you have a Hamsa Yoga in your chart, say supposing Moon is... A sun, Jupiter is placed in Pisces uh, yeah. for, uh, for this uh, Virgo Lagna, but Moon is debilitated, then... They say, I have an Hamsa Yoga, but why is it not working? It's not working because the moon is not able to support the chart. Exactly. So then the remedy would be to strengthen the moon, and then the Hamsa Yoga would work for the person. Of course, you have to debate if the person should have Hamsa Yoga in their life. Maybe they don't want it. They just think it's good, but they don't want it. You know? Hamsa Yoga, everybody should be spiritual. Everybody should be studying. Everybody should be in their books all the time. Everybody should be reading and going to school and everybody should be academic, you know, intellectuals. Suddenly nothing gets done because everybody's studying, right? <laughs> so, so, so then, then the debate that if you tell that to a person and he, they're working in a, in a business or, they're, or their job is to, you know, uh, to, to work in something which requires a little bit more brawn and, you know, a bit more strength, physical strength, you activate their hamsa yoga, they'll stop going to work. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. That's another part of the chart that we are, that sometimes we have, we should not forget. Not every good yoga is the yoga sustaining you in your life right now. Make sure you know as an astrologer that you are guiding the person to the right yoga. Okay? That's a separate. Hamsa Yoga wants to bring the sky down and everybody should study. Now, um, this is a beautiful point, Vishti. I'm just interrupting to say that's a beautiful point for us astrologers out there to know as to what the person is doing. Look into the person's history before you guide the person so that you can guide the person in a better manner and not just bring about a total chaos in his or her life uh, so that, you know, the person might just end up uh, blaming you for it. Thank you that's so right. much. That's right. Yes. My pleasure, of course. Um, so I have some slides. Let me try and share them so that we can get deeper into this topic. This is some, the slides that I have presented. This is, of course, the first slide, all about conjunctions. And uh, let's go swiftly to the first slide, where in which I want to explain what conjunction is all about and where it fits in the whole paradigm of reading, you know, yogas. So Parashara speaks of, yes, this Parashara speaks of this. He speaks of four types of yoga, all right? And he speaks of that there is yuti, and, uh, but he does not seem to consider this the highest yoga, all right? He considers Parivartan the highest yoga. Okay. He considers that much higher. When two grahas are in a perfect handshake with each other, exchanging each other's results. Okay? okay, in our tradition, we call this Purna Pada Yoga. That means all the four ayanas they're exchanging. Okay, okay. all four ayanas. Dharma, Artha, Kama, Moksha, they are doing all the job. Okay. All right. Yuti, which is next in line, which we consider very high, mm -hmm. that is a yuti in the same sign or amsha. It could even be same nakshatra. So that means even in the divisional charts, this applies. All right. For that matter, Parivartan also applies in all divisional chants. But the point is, is that because this is of a lesser value than Parivartana, we call this Tripada Yoga. Tripada Yoga means that one ayana is missing. These two grahas, which are having UT, are having a handshake, but not in all matters. Hmm. In three out of four. So that means that's maybe supporting only Dharma, Artha, and Karma, but not Moksha. Or it could be artha, karma, and moksha, but not dharma. Something like that. Something is missing. All right. Something so is it missing. Could be any one of the any one of the uh, four that could be missing. Not necessarily only dharma or the moksha. Any one. Yes, of it could be any of them. Which one? We will depend on by seeing the nakshatra pada it occupies. Okay. Yeah. 
So it will be the same nakshatra pada, that ayana, plus the one before and one after. Okay. Yeah, yeah. The closest vicinity. <laughs> now, then there's parivartana drishti. People don't use this. They really don't. Okay? Mm. They don't know how to use it also. This is like, let us say, Mars is in Libra. Right. And... Uh, let us say Venus is in Capricorn. All right. So, wait, is that a good example? No, I'm sorry. That's not a good example. I'll take a slightly different example. Uh, I will say that Mars is still in Libra. All right. And Saturn, no, not Saturn. That's not a good one. Let me see. I want Jupiter to be in. Yes, to be in Taurus. Mars and Libra, Jupiter and Taurus. Okay? Hmm. So what is happening in this case? Mars is having 8th house drishti on Taurus where Jupiter is. Right. Okay? Right. Now Jupiter is not aspecting Mars back. Right. But Jupiter is aspecting Scorpio, the opposite sign. Hmm. Hmm. So... It is, they are not mutually aspecting each other, but one is aspecting one graha, and that graha is aspecting the other one's sign. So this is like a parivartana drishti. Now the peculiarity is this is stronger than mutual drishti, according to Parashara. Hmm. So people would have preferred that Jupiter and Mars have mutual drishti on each other, like one seven, you know, Aries, Libra opposite each other. But actually, when Jupiter went into Taurus. He became even stronger in his yoga with Mars. Mm -hmm. This is called two pada yoga. Mm -hmm. And some drishti is one pada yoga. All right? Mutual drishti is one pada yoga. So, yuti that we're going to debate and discuss is here three pada. Okay. Parivartana and yuti have to be taught together. Okay. okay? So, I'm going to teach some aspects of parivartana. All right? Mm -hmm. And then. There should be a separate talk just on Parivartan, a separate talk on each of these drishtis to get the full importance. So I would, I would encourage people should have a very strong reference to these two at the bottom so that they don't ignore Parivartan drishti. Now, as a helpful understanding of what this means, everything that depends on drishti it may not be permanent in nature, especially because from this perspective, you have heard me speak of graha drishti now, right? Graha drishti. But there is something called Rashi Drishti also. Now, in yoga, we don't really read Rashi Drishti. We read Graha Drishti. Rashi Drishti has its relevance, but not from the perspective of Grahas having yoga with each other. Okay? Mm -hmm. So these two Drishtis are very much dependent on Dasha. This won't function unless the Dasha happens, because these are dependent on desire. And the desire will depend on the time. You don't have the same thoughts that you had uh, today, your thoughts are not the same as those that you had when you were four years of age or nine years of age or 12 years of age. Okay. Right. If you let, let alone one year or even maybe one month ago, they're not the same thoughts. Right. So those thoughts are changing. That changes Dasha. Okay. Right. But it could be that you are still living in the same home that you were living in one month ago. Right. Yeah. It would be a, be a misfortune if you had lived, you were changing homes every one month. But the, but you're living in the same home. So circumstances have not changed. And those circumstances depend on another type of drishti called Rashi drishti, circumstantial events. Okay? Okay. So that's, the, that, that's where we have to differentiate. Graha drishti, thoughts and desires. And this is affecting these two yogas here. Okay. Now, I had to note, Parivartana is considered higher importance than yoga, than yuti. So here's a teasing question. Um, UT can need not be UT with a graha, right? UT you can have with a sign without having any yoga, right? right? You can have you can have like a planet in the sign, and you can say this is not a yoga, right? Unless it's Mahapurush, but then we have to add a graha to the analysis. Okay. So, question: If UT a sign is like being an Om sign, then Parivartana, if it's higher than UT is higher than Om sign. Yes. Okay? So yeah. what is higher than Om sign? Exaltation? Exaltation? Yeah. So a planet is in Parivartana, it will start acting like exalted. 
Okay. It's not exalted. It will act like it. Okay. Peculiar principle, you know? So yes. here, so supposing Jupiter and um, Mars exchange signs, say yes. for an Aries Lagna, uh, Jupiter is placed in um, uh, in Lagna and Mars is placed in the ninth house. So yeah. or if I can say if Jupiter is placed in Scorpio and Mars is placed in the 12th house in Pisces and in that case it's in bad houses but mm -hmm. by virtue of their Parivartana they are supposed to be exalted. They are behaving like exalted. exalted. Okay. Peculiar, right? Very. But that is the implication. It has to be higher than on sign. Okay. Right? It right. has to be more than on sign. So what is more than that? So somebody will say, okay, more than Swakshetra is Mutrikona, more than Mutrikona is Ucha. Okay? Yeah. So that is that, that, is that to topic we are getting into when we talk of Parivartana. Okay. So, so value to think about. Hmm. Now, let's get deeper into UT. So, Graha Yoga. So, yoga, I've talked a little bit about that. Yoga is a Dvaita or a dualistic concept requiring two objects, you know, two Grahas. Mm -hmm. And Vedic astrology speaks of two types of yoga. By the way, all astrologies I know speak of two types of yoga. All of them. West, Western, Tajaka, Tajaka is big on this. In fact, Ved, so many people in Vedic astrology have borrowed principles from Tajaka to fill in gaps that they could not find in Vedic astrology. But we have them in Vedic astrology. We have a type of yoga called Sam Yoga. Sam Yoga means two grahas are approaching each other. They're coming together. Their transit is heading towards each other. All right? So usually this is like Jupiter at five degrees and Mercury at three degrees. Well, Jupiter is slow. Mercury is faster. So they're approaching each other. Hmm. We call this Sam Yoga. All right? But what happens if Jupiter was still at five degrees, but Mercury was at eight? They're separating. We call this V Yoga. Yeah. All right? Yeah. So the same conjunction can have two different results. So we use Depending that in Prashna also. We use it as Ittasala and Isarfa Yogas. Yes. Now that's part of Tajaka, right? Ittasala is Sam Yoga. Asarpa is V Yoga. The Vedic terms are Sam Yoga, V Yoga. The Tajika system has them also, and a very nice and elaborate method of that. But it's not only there that these principles are there. We have them in Vedic astrology, but we had to borrow them, those who didn't know where it was in Vedic astrology. Okay? So I'm just teaching the Vedic astrology part of it. Now, like, I, like you just pointed out, this is applied vigorously in Tajika. It's also in the Occidental astrology schools. I say Occidental because I don't know if it's an appropriate term to call it Western or Greek astrology that we have used in, in, in Europe and which has also gone to the US. All right. Now, some yoga of planets implies something good or bad entering our lives. V yoga of planets implies something good or bad leaving our lives. So you can have you can have a bad yoga, but it's leaving you. That's nice. All right. You can have a bad yoga, but it's coming. Now in Prashna this makes more sense because you know when is it coming and when is it leaving? In a birth chart, everything is future. Right. Okay? But some yoga is also termed, termed Bhavishya yoga, future. Okay? Right. And Abhi yoga is also termed Atita yoga, which means that it has already occurred in the past, which makes sense in Prashna. But it doesn't make sense in birth charts. Yes. I okay. Yes. So there's something missing here or hidden here or something we don't fully fathom yet that has to be de derived from here. Yeah. Um, is it something related to past life, is it? You see, in the birth chart, everything has already happened and in the past life and the, the current chart, the birth chart, is a staple of what has happened already. And the karmas are now embedded in the chart, all right, because of that, the result of the actions. Right. So when I say Atita Yoga is in a birth chart, we are not referring to that something has already happened in the past. It has already happened and the chart result is there and we have to see what happened in the future as a result of what happened in the past. So instead it means something a bit more technical, namely that if two planets are having V Yoga, that it may be that you have to see the signs behind the yoga to see the result of the yoga. And Bhavishya Yoga means see the signs in front of the yoga to see the result of the yoga. 
The word is beautiful. Right. So that means you're having a yoga in one sign, but other signs are becoming relevant depending on whether it's bhavishya or atita yoga. Right. It's beautiful. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Peculiar. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. You need to learn a bit more before we talk about that. But now I've spoken that this is part of yoga. When you learn yoga, this is part of it. So we'll do a little bit about that. And this is part of what we call in the Vedic tradition, and it's also a term used elaborately in the Nadis, Sang Yoga Sputa, Sam Yoga Sputa. When two bodies form yoga, Chandra Kalanadi asks us to calculate the Sam Yoga Sputa, to ascertain the details of the yoga, and also Dasha or Gochara timing. Now, this is something also used in the Occidental schools very elaborately. It's called the midpoint. Yes. Yeah. And uh, so, if somebody sat and thought, no, 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 that midpoint is Western astrology. We will not use that. It's called Samyoga Sputa. <laughs> and if you're not using it, you should probably start using it. Okay? Because it's very useful. Mm. Now, it can be drawn for two bodies conjoining in a sign. So that means, let's say we, talk that, we talked about that Guru and Buddha yoga, right? Mm. Guru was at five degrees. Buddha was at eight degrees. What's the difference between them? Three degrees. So halfway in between is one and a half. So if I take five plus one and a half, I'll get six and a half. That's halfway between. So that midpoint, that is where the yoga is happening between these two grahas. Mm -hmm. okay. mm. I have to read that point in the chart for timing events. Okay? I have to read that point to see what is that nakshatra of the yoga. Maybe these are happening across two different signs. Usually that's not how yoga works, right? Okay. right. But what if in two, in same sign, but do two different nakshatras? Then you have to find out which nakshatra the yoga sputa is actually happening. Hmm. Okay? That nakshatra will be relevant for timing the event of the yoga. Okay? Yeah. Just a second, Vishti, can I just ask you a question here? In the example that we took about Mars and Jupiter exchanging signs. Um, yes. Uh, yes. So when we are doing that, so we are, there are signs are exchanged. So we see what degree and then we come to a midpoint uh, for. Yes. And then That's we right. see that something starts working from there. I mean, the event, somebody would say when this planet would transit this, uh, but it's not happening now. It happened a little later. Why did it happen a little later? Because that midpoint got activated by the transit. Exactly. And that's exactly what Chandra Kalanadi asked us to do. But Chandra Kalanadi goes one step further. For example, we have these interesting midpoints. The Samyoga Sputa of Moon and Ketu, regardless of where they are in the chart, they may not be in the same sign. It's called Brigu Bindu today. That's what we term it today. Okay? Hmm. But Chandra Kalanadi gets very pragmatic. It states, the Samyoga Sputa of Lagna degree and the seventh lord is used to time marriage. Oh my God. It's beautiful. Right. Samyoga Sputa of Lagna degree and sixth lord is used examined to time celibacy and enmity. Oh. And don't restrict yourself. You can, they, in Chandra Kalanadi, this is used for transits. Okay? I'm going to tell you, I'm going to share with you how to use Lagna and Seventh Lord to time marriage, you find, to find the age of marriage. Right. So, so don't restrict. You can use this to find an age. You can use it to find a, 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 a gochara. You can use it to find a dasha. Hmm. Okay. And we can use it, say, say uh, supposing uh, Lagna. If I am to take it a little forward, uh, I may be wrong. It's just my question to you the Lagna and the fifth house, fifth Lord. So wherever their mm -hmm. position is. So my high rise in position or my intelligence, you know, mm -hmm. being shown or my taking up a mantra Siddhi at that time. So if mm -hmm. I can find the midpoint and say Guru, uh, transiting yeah. that midpoint. So if yeah. you to tell me when I would start my mantra Siddhi or when I would yes. attain a power of position, something like that. Yes, 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 absolutely. That's right. That's how we'd approach it. My recommendation you should learn how transits work from this point. Hmm. Shani in, uh, in contact from this point is making this yoga uh, not available. Okay. Contact Shani from this point will make it unavailable. Okay. So we're getting into 
what we are talking about is uh, here we're getting into gochara results all right right so guru will bless anything that it is in fifth house ninth house eleventh house second house or seventh house okay all right so right. then that yoga is working very well when guru is in those signs from it right. so once you find the sun yoga sputa you take transits from there all right. of them main ones shani guru rahu of course the main ones you take there from there and then you analyze the results and when these are positive then you start going to the smaller transits when you see your negative then you get into the small transit to time exactly then. so like that you should find the sputter first and then you start deciding okay so but like i said we could really go far with this so let's try something mm. data some yoga sputter timing age of marriage mm. so as an example should the lagna be five degrees so i'm taking from zero to thirty all right i'm not going beyond thirty degrees it's only that science degree five degrees and the seventh lord be 20 degrees the marital age is 25 years of age okay now somebody is going to argue does that mean Visti people will not marry after the age of 60 because maximum is 60 degrees based on two signs put together right and so i have to say no no in fact this method that i just showed it rarely works straight <laughs> rarely does it work straight it's never exactly precise but requires interpolations of five years to obtain the correct age so if they obtained age is 25, add or remove multiples of 5 to get 20, 25, 30, 35, etc. as the optional age of the first marriage. Note, I said first marriage, right? Right. Yes. Best if combined with dashes or a secondary method to obtain the right ages. So if you knew the options are 20, 25, 30, 35, then you see what is the dash at 20, what is the age dash at 25, what is the dash at 30, what is the dash at 35, and then the one you fit best with, you know, that's the one. So you could have a dasha with a span of three years, but in those three years, you only have one year to choose from because of this method. Yes. It's so, now, second marriage is decided from second lord, third mm -hmm. from the ninth lord. This has been my research, this last, this last line. This is my research because I could not fit it otherwise. Okay? Okay. Let me show an example of this. This is a woman called Reni DiMarco. And this slide looks very technical because I have a bunch of degrees on the chart. I have all sorts of calculations. But I'm going to show how I've done this. I, if I just do this, put that here maybe for a minute. Okay. This video feed I'm trying to move around. I think it's fine now. Okay. Now, so this person was married three times. All right. She's a, she was a dancer, cabaret dancer. And um, it, it was very interesting for me to see how can I time these events, all right? Yeah. Now, I, this is a bit of reverse engineering because I already know that when she was married, but then again, if it was a prediction about a future marriage, then you wouldn't learn anything. So I'm going to show how I've done this. So the Lagna degree was given as 27 degrees. You can see it says 2745 over here, okay? I don't know if you prefer South or North Indian. I don't use either, but I'm using North right on screen now. So okay. it says 27 degrees here, 45 minutes. The seventh Lord is moon and it's at 10 degrees, three minutes. So if I add these two together, I'll get something like 38 37. degrees, 48 minutes. 37 degrees, 48 minutes. So it says here, 37, 48 or 38 year, we could argue. Now this is, I didn't rectify the chart, so I don't know how accurate this degree is. So I could be off by a little bit. It's possible. Right. All right. right. But I do notice here that if, when I add or remove multiples of five, we get 18, 23, 28, 33, and so on. Hmm. The person married at the age of 18. Hmm. Working. Mm -hmm. Working. Now, the second marriage is a 30, and I see that none of these ages are indicated here. You see that? None of them are indicated. None. So maybe the seventh Lord won't doesn't work for the first marriage. So second marriage, let me try second Lord. I have second Lords, either Saturn or Rahu for a Kumbha Lagna. Yes. Okay? So that some people only will use Rahu, but I'm going to show. You mean Makar Lagna. Uh, uh, sorry, Kumbha is the second house. Okay, my mistake. Kumbha is the second house. It can be loaded by Shani or Rahu. Okay. Mm. So I'm going to show Shani in this case. Now, mm. 27 degrees. 
for Lagna, we had that 27, 45. Saturn is at 14 degrees 19. When I add these two together, I'm going to get something like, what is that? 21. 41, maybe 42. Two. Something close to that. 41, 42. All right? Mm. So, then, this means that the ages will be 21, 26, 31, 36, 41. The person married at 30, but I don't know exactly when. Was it before or after the birthday? Uh, just a second here, just a point of confirmation here, Vishti. So we are not going to take the signs into consideration. We're just taking the degrees. Just ignore the signs. Ignore yeah. the signs, take degrees. That's right. Yeah. And so I see, I came pretty close. I have one which says 31. It's one year off. Maybe I have to make some adjustment for the Lagna degree hmm. for this which I'm also seeing, it could be that I have to do it here. So there's something going on over here about the Lagna degree. Maybe it's one degree off. But Can as you matter. said, it's a, it's a, a broader transit. And when uh, we uh, work on with the other transits and the minor transits, we come to exactly. a very definite date. Exactly. Now the third marriage, I, I will now take ninth house Lord, which is Buddha. But I also have an option of taking Rahu. We can try both and see which works. Okay. okay, we say in my tradition, we say Kanya can also be loaded by Rahu. Okay. So I have 2745. Right? Right. If I add to Buddha, that's one degree 27. So I'm going to get something like 29 degrees and right. some change. All right? Right. So that means I will get the ages of what? 24, 29, 34, and so on. Okay? All right? The person married at 34. I could also take Rahu, 7 degrees, 27 mm -hmm. plus 7, 34, married to 34. So in this case, it was, we are fortunate, we're lucky it works both ways. All right? So, so I get a broad number of years, and if we're smart, we can use this with dashes and get the exact, you know, span when it is going to happen. You see that? Transit so, source. We can use it with transit sources. Don't restrict. We can use it with transits. That's right. What if I use the actual sputa? Because what I did was I just added the degrees independent of signs. Now watch this. So I will take 27 degrees 45 minutes of Capricorn. Hmm. Seventh Lord is Moon, which is also in Capricorn at 10 degrees 3 minutes. Hmm. Now this is, if I add the two, including the signs, I am going to get Scorpio, 7 degrees, 48 minutes. So the Sam Yoga Sputa is actually in Scorpio. This is what we call the Sam Yoga Sputa. It will be here in Scorpio. So I will take transits. Somewhere here, which will trigger from, off. Exactly. This will trigger the marriage of the first marriage distinctly. So let me see. The person married at 18. So largely that will correspond to, let me see, um, Jupiter is going to be over here. Hmm. in Taurus, and being opposite Scorpio. And guess what? That's very fortunate for marriage. Right. What is most notable is about this is, I did a round calculation. At 18 years of age, Jupiter will be around this sign. Okay? Yes. Notably, yeah. this is in tri not in trines to seventh house, but it is in trines to seventh Lord mm -hmm. moon, but it is also having mutual drishti with the Samyoga Sputra. So it is working. You're right. Okay. It is working. All this right. is a very, this is a very beautiful method. This is an extremely beautiful method, if I can say so. And it, the best part is the layman can also work on this method. He gets a exactly. broad scale of finding out when there is a likely marriage, and then if we are more, uh, you know, more, uh, more into astrology, then we can use transits or the dashas or BCPs as we want to, and then we can... Uh... I, was, I was taught by my Guruji from the beginning, never use only one principle for timing events. You need a Naisargika Dasha, natural Dasha first. Hmm. What do you consider Naisargika? That's up to you. you. Somebody considers transits as their Naisargika method, all right? Hmm. Some people use Vimshotri as their basic, their base method. Some people use these natural ages. Naisargika is natural, right? Natural ages. Naisargika vara. Naisargika years. I use that a lot. And then on top of that, they add the layer of a specific system that they will use to 
uh, uh, you know, to clarify these, all right? So in our tradition, we are taught, use Naisargika Dasha, for example. Rashara teaches that. Excuse me. Did you know Naisargika Dasha was the favorite of Varamahira? Oh. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. okay. So this is where we have the use of Samyoga Sputta. Now, having taught this, now I want to enter into the specific role of conjunctions. And we're going to get into multiple conjunctions, you know? <laughs> and start unraveling how exactly to interpret these conjunctions. What do they mean? And the technicalities behind that, the Shastric references to this as well. So this, uh, we will end this one section of the video here. And uh, we will continue with what we just said, unraveling about the conjoined planets in the next video. Do keep an eye on it. And do keep an eye for it. It's a beautiful video coming up. But till then, there's so much material given to you in this one video. Work it out in your charts. Leave an opinion. Leave a uh, remark there for us to work harder. Be more inspired by your remarks. Till we meet again, have a nice time and study real hard. Thank you. Thank you.